I chose Radiata Pine to build my bench for several reasons. First, it's available as one by 10 by eight foot stock from my local home center. Now I could have used a wider board than this to build my bench and just made a couple of additional saw cuts to get everything to size. But if I chose to use a narrower board, it would be necessary for me to glue two or more boards up to make a wide panel for the top and legs of the bench. And I really didn't want to do that. I wanted to go with a single wide board for the top and the legs. Second, Radiata pine is a bit denser than eastern white pine, but it's not so dense as to be difficult to work with hand tools. Some other good options for me locally would have been poplar, walnut, or butternut, as these would have been good woods to work with hand tools as well. Much denser than these woods, however, and the woods start to get a little bit difficult to work using hand tools. So I'd recommend looking for something locally that's not much denser than walnut. Third, radiata pine from the home center is surfaced on all four sides and it's nice and flat. Now our focus for this course is on sawing and I really didn't wanna to have to go and plane rough sawn lumber. So being able to find lumber that is surfaced on four sides and nice and flat is a real bonus and I really recommend you do so for this course. Also, radiata pine is really nice and clear and free from knots. So we won't have any knots or defects that we have to deal with with this particular board. Now don't feel that you have to use radiata pine just because that's what I chose for my project. I suggest you look around locally and see what you can find in a board that's about nine inches wide, eight feet long, surfaced on four sides, and nice and clear and free of knots and defects. There are a lot of different woods that will work for this project. And the first thing that we need to do is to lay out where all of our parts are going to come from on the board. And we're gonna use our parts list from our project notes as a guide for the dimensions of the pieces, but we're going to lay everything out one inch oversized in length. Now I'm just using a pencil because I'm only breaking parts down into more manageable pieces at this point. These are going to be third class cuts. We're not cutting everything to final size just yet. We're cutting it one inch oversized. Now when I get to the stretchers, I'm going to lay them out in pairs because they only need to be three and a half inches wide, the final length, the final width, and this board is nine inches wide, nine and a quarter. So I can get two of them out of the width of this. So what I'm gonna do is set my combination square to about half the width of this board and use it kind of like a gauge and just draw in a center mark with my pencil. Now I'll be able to get four stretchers out of these two pieces. Now this board is already planed flat on two faces and square and straight on the two edges. So theoretically, we could have just gone straight to second class saw cuts and cut all of these parts right to final size from this board. So in this case, cutting oversized wasn't absolutely critical. However, when you start to work with rough sawn boards that don't have a flat plane face or a straight and square plane edge, it's going to be very critical to leave extra length and extra width. So it's good to get in the habit now, even though it wasn't absolutely necessary with this particular board. I'm going to make these oversized cuts down here at the saw bench because it's the easiest and fastest way that I know to manage long boards like this and make these oversized third class cuts because I can use my body to hold the board in place and I don't have to worry about readjusting a bench vise or a clamp after every cut. Now I'm using a cross cut saw and to position myself 
and set up for cross cutting, I stand to the side of the saw bench and I'm going to place my left knee on top of the board to hold it down. Now I'm positioning myself relative to the cut line like we talked about earlier in the course with my saw, wrist, elbow, shoulder, all in line with the cut line in a single plane. My right eye is over the back of the saw. My left eye can see the pencil line. I'm going to put my left thumb up next to this pencil line to help me position and guide my saw. And I'm going to use the saw without sawing technique that we talked about earlier to get the cut started. As I saw, I'm moving everything in a nice straight line and my right eye is watching the back of the saw blade to keep everything nice and plumb. As I approach the end of the cut, I'm going to reach over with my left hand and take hold of the off cut and support it because I don't want this piece to break off as it gets weak over here because it'll create a splinter. So I'm going to hold on here and I'm going to lighten up my saw stroke as I get close to the end, similar to the technique we use for starting the saw so that I don't blow through the back side and chip it out. By doing so, we get a nice clean cut with no chip out on this back corner. I can now repeat the process for the remaining cross cuts, except for the cross cut between the two sets of stretchers. I'm not going to cut that one yet. left the two sets of stretchers long at this point. In other words, I didn't make the cross cut between the two sets to separate them because it's easier to hold stock for ripping if it's a little bit longer. So to set up and hold stock for ripping at the saw bench, this time I'm going to place myself alongside of the saw bench, but in line with it, I'll extend the board off the edge of the bench a little bit so I don't cut into the edge of the bench and I'll use my right knee to hold the board down now, and then set myself up for making the cut. Making the rip cut is very similar to making the cross cut. I position myself with the cut line, use my thumb to position and guide my saw, use our saw without sawing technique to start the cut, and I'm gonna move everything in a nice straight line Here, as I start to approach the edge of the saw bench, I'll just move the board forward a little bit. Now you can see why having this stock a little bit longer is very beneficial. If this stock was really short, you can see this saw is going to come dangerously close to my leg. So what I'll do is saw about halfway through, flip the stock around, and then I'll start from the other end.
Now, if you've sharpened your saw well and tuned it well, you'll notice that I can track that line and meet up perfectly with my other cut. So now I can cross cut these two. So if we were working with rough sawn stock, now would be the time to take all these pieces and plane them flat, straight, and square. However, since we're already working with stock that's already planed, we don't have to worry about that. So we can now move on to cutting some of these pieces to find the length. Now these are going to be second class saw cuts, so we're going to use a knife to mark them out. But I first want to identify a reference face and a reference edge. And this is simply going to be a face and edge that are nice and flat and square. So that's nice and flat. And that edge is nice and square. So we're going to mark this edge and we're going to mark this face. And these two surfaces are the only surfaces we're going to use to reference the square off of. So when we're marking, doing any layout, we'll reference the square only off this edge or only off this face. And the first thing we want to do is to square up one end. And again, we're dealing with lumber that's already fairly straight and square, so we could have done this before. But we're just going to do it now. Um, and we're going to use our bench hooks to help us a little bit. So here's my reference edge. I reference my square here. And I'm going to use my knife to give me a nice, straight, clean, crisp mark. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to progressively deepen this score line. So we're going to make this a couple of times, not just once. Now, this is my reference face. So I need to square across the end. I'll put my knife in the line, square across. Reference face, reference edge. Put my knife. See, I don't even need to actually see it. I can just drag my knife until it finds that mark. And if you did it right, when you make that last score, it should line up perfectly with your first one. And here's a good look at why using reference edges and faces are so important. So on this stretcher piece, we rip this, but we have a very rough edge here. This is neither straight nor square. However, this edge is, is straight and square to this face. By referencing off of only this face and this edge, you'll notice that even on the ragged side, I get perfect alignment of the knife line. I'll make these cuts at the bench hook, and I'm going to use a saw with slightly finer teeth, in this case a crosscut saw. And I'm going to use the same process as before. This time I'll just use my finger instead of my thumb to position the saw. Use our saw without sawing technique and let the saw gently work its way into the wood. And I want the blade to track right along this knife line so it leaves a nice clean cut.
with one end of each piece cut square. I'll mark the finish length and then scribe that all around all four sides of the board. If by chance I have multiple parts that all have to be an identical length, the easiest way to handle that is to get the square cut ends all nice and straight and flush and then mark across the edges of all four pieces or all the multiple pieces at once. That ensures that they're all marked to exactly the same length and I don't have to measure each one of those individual parts. Then I can unclamp this and transfer that mark around each of these four pieces. Then it's back to the bench hook to saw the other end square. Now with wide pieces like this, the process starts the same. And I'll start at one end, but I'll nibble my way back. You can see I can, I'll move my finger back along and I'm guiding the saw back along that knife line, making sure that I stay on the waist side of the line. This gets me started nice and straight along that knife line. Then what I like to do is drop the saw in on this side because I can follow the vertical on this edge. Then I'll start sawing the rest of the way through. Now, I'm not going to worry about ripping these stretchers to width just yet. It's really not necessary that these be final width before the next step. And in fact, if we happen to cut the joinery a little bit too deep when we do the next step, we'll be able to fix that or at least adjust for it if we leave this stretcher stock wider than it needs to be. If we cut this down to three and a half inches exactly right now and we cut that joinery a little bit too deep, then the stretcher is going to sit below the top of the leg and there's not going to be a real easy fix for that. We may have to remake the parts. So we'll just leave them wide for now and we can move on to the joinery.